another project from OBS Studios and this one was actually created since I was around like seven and nine years old actually. Again, much like Happily Bebop and ending it all, Recessional of the Red Dragons, this is another continuation project. The show the we are VR uh, the show VR Troopers has actually been canned because believe it or not it wasn't due to low ratings. Compared to the Power Rangers, they were pretty successful. But it's because they ran out of stock footage. Yeah, that's the problem with Toku. Anyways, I wish they would get, like, a remastered digital version to, like, complete it. But this story does just that. We Are VR Troopers is actually a crossover between VR Troopers as well as Mutant League Football. Yeah, very unlikely. But you'll see why soon enough. They're the two things that actually inspired me when I was like seven-ish. And this story does just that. Alright, We Are VR Troopers. First off, I don't know Bear Troopers and Mutant League Football, I just happened to be a huge fan when I was a youngster. Introducing the crossover I came up with since I was a kid. I came up with this idea since I was around 7 years old, and both things have influenced me greatly. It's strange that I was turned on by the VR Troopers and not their sister series, Power Rangers. Yet they never finished due to Zabon running out of stock footage. If only they could finish a third season somehow. So without further ado, let me introduce you to something so bizarre that it may make a difference to both sides. Episode 93, The Backstory. Because the show itself had 92 episodes, even though most of them were, like, insignificant. But let's get this thing going. This all happened during the start of the football season. Grimoire General Ivar and Colonel Icebot had begun their invasion of virtual reality. At the battlefield, the former Galaxy Aces were defeating the 60 Winers seamlessly. If you played Mutant League Football, you know how pathetic the 60 Winers are. Until... The field was attacked, and the Winers were killed almost instantly during the bombing. Most of the audience evacuated, however, upon exposure to radiation, everyone gradually rotted and transformed into mutants, while some actually died. Bloodclot was one of the lucky players that left unscathed, yet he still turned into an abomination, particularly superhuman. Soon, all the stadiums and fields were nuked, forming deep craters, landmines, and enormous mutations. The only inhabitants that weren't affected were the dragon-like aliens, as well as the trolls. The majority of the survivors have turned themselves into skeletons with bare bones, were freaks with superhuman enhancements. Despite the sudden losses and destruction, the football season began a complete overhaul. The Mutant League Football League was born, and customs were changed radically. Unbeknownst to them, the battle was also raging outside in the real world, where three young adults were recruited by Professor Horatio Hart 
enlisting them as the VR Troopers. Their mission was to put a stop to Grim Lord's mayhem in virtual reality. They took the fight there as well as the breakthrough, the reality barrier, while the games were still taking place. It wasn't until a young girl named Cheetah Comet was playing one of her favorite Sega games that she was introduced to them personally. She first met Ryan, Caitlin, and JB as she became fascinated in learning karate at Tao's dojo. Unfortunately, she wasn't as coordinated as the rest of the junior division, nor had good balance. And neither do I. Despite her hindrances, every once in a while she'd hang out with the trio after school while also getting some help with her own work, as well as doing some odd jobs. Since then, Ryan had been a good friend and mentor towards her. That actually developed her first crush. While the team went into battle, she would watch them unfold via the professor's lab along with Hart and Jeb, encouraging her heroes on. Through a tear in the reality barrier on one fateful day as she was playing the same game, she was sucked into the war stadium and came across the players. She recognized them within a moment's notice. The team didn't lay a hand on her. They were quite impressed that someone from the outside knew who they were. Shortly afterwards, both the Slammers and Sheeta encountered the troopers as they faced off with one of Grimlord's robots named Footbot that looked similar, though abhorrent, to an actual football player. Thinking it was an insult, Dokken and Shokken led the ambush along with their close bu buddies Bloodclot, Razor Kid, Snake, Nelson, Mortar, and the two trolls, Mo and Spewpuke, who were actually twins. They later introduced themselves, and the trio couldn't thank Sheeta enough for finding some reinforcements while they were searching for her. After they took her home, they decided unanimously to make contact with them utilizing Professor's technical assistant. And that was how the bond between the troopers and the mutant league began. The guys could never forget all those times the troopers have saved and assisted their hides, as well as protected their domains. It was actually thanks to Professor Hart who managed to find some more of the resistors deep within virtual reality. They couldn't be more grateful on how their broken lives were spared, from the moment when the Val Vulgars scattered out of their turf while the Big Bad made the nearby cave his temporary base in the and the hump dome as Tyler Steele was held hostage. To the killer convicts and the Ice Bay bashers, helping them fight back at their slippery fields. Even the times when Grimlord invaded the Void Club, also known as the Indigo Sector, and the Red Rockers evacuated unscathed. There was also the ruled warriors, psycho slashers, drugstore dragons, as well as others, and even the bullies such as the Terminator Trolls and the Slay City Slayers lent a hand. As their determination grew, more and more teams bound together, drove away most of Grimlord's armies, and befriended the trio. They were quite impressed that a small number of courageous, resourceful, not to mention average, humans could stand up against such unspeakable odds. Although nearly all the players were united, there was a lonesome group of robots known as the Turbotechies that resided on a distant massive rock called Asteroid 66. A little to no interest working with organic life forms, skin or no skin, as they were too primitive for their taste. They were the most mysterious and they were rarely seen, unless if they were to be a new playoff scheme or the occasional single game. Not to mention, they always spoke in beeps and chirps instead of communicating in a normal manner, as Blood Clot would say. The location was eventually found as JB programmed Galileo in both worlds which is this last episode. Unfortunately, tragedy struck. The battlefield was destroyed and the League's best team, the Galaxy Aces, have died trying to fend off Grimlord and his onslaughts. Every one of the mutants have perished, except Bloodclot, who narrowly escaped. Over time, the Slammers and their coach, the General, had officially made the troopers allies to the war effort, as did the other regrouping teams scattered across the virtual realm. JB eventually got the superhumans rounded up by Blood Clot from the Road Warriors. Ryan joined the Allies, aliens, who were recruited by the Razor Kid, who was dumped by the Psycho Slashers and became a vital part of the Screaming Evils, particularly the quarterback. Jeb got Mo and Spew Puke and the Trolls due to their wicked sense of humor. Caitlin got the Skeletons, led by Snake from the Deathskin Razors. 
and Hart mentors with the coaches, mostly with the general. At one point, the superhumans and skeletons revealed they were human once before they were mutated, so they had a soft spot for the trio. That was when Razor Kid personally got involved with helping her best friend find his father and rescue him from Grimlord. Event Unfortunately, the mutants were overmatched by Zipdor's massive upgrade, even by Despair's fatal staff, which incinerated some of the teammates before Ryan with his new power suit arrived. That was the end of of that mini series, <clears throat> the quest for power. Man, that was creepy. There was also a point when Snake and the Razor Skins made a protest as they found out about Caitlyn's dark motives, which turned out to be her doppelganger's doing. Caitlyn threw the looking glass. And finally, with the help from JB's little space probe, he was able to find a desolate location known as Asteroid 66, the home of the lesser-known team of the League known as the Turbo Techies. And now the long-awaited war has been declared. The fate of both worlds will soon be decided. Will Grimlord's long reign can finally be put to an absolute end in favor of the troopers and mutants? Only time and space can tell the final tale. The inspiration of Cheetah first came from a comic book that caught my eye as a kid that was simply named The Comet. And later I was also enthralled by how majestic and, and fast cheetahs were. I wasn't really into the comic, but I did come up with the lame alias known as the Comet for Ryan in a Season 2 Avatar, and Cheetah for... well, Cheetah. So I decided to name her Cheetah Comet instead. I just didn't want to give it up on those terms entirely, but use them in a better fashion. This was before I started using OCs more properly, so I was just starting out with fanfic concepts. Besides... Ryan Steele was indeed my first ever crush. He was a very huge guilty pleasure of mine. There were always something about him that fascinated me when I was a kid. Even now, I see him as the main hero. It could be almost anything, really. I know it sounds embarrassing, but that's what that's when this whole thing started. It's about darn time this series finally gets the finale it truly deserves. Too bad Saban ran out of footage. I don't understand why we can't just finish it with the advanced technology we have now. I doubt the cast would be willing to reprise their roles, and the actors that play Tao and Carl have bit the dust. So, I'm tired of false hope. Let's finish this thing, shall we? Let's start with the first chapter. Well, actually, the 94th episode. I forgot to mention that the mutants' possible debut to the series' is field goal, which was a shame since they didn't make an appearance until way after the Darkheart arc. If only I could remember when I really introduced him. Aside from the cancellation due to the depletion of stock footage, there's one tiny bit problem that really bothered me. The VR Troopers never had a freaking army! I'm sick that it's just the three of them against Grimlord without an army! How can he stand a chance against him and his army without one? How? Sorry for that outburst, but in all honesty, the odds would have been truly against them if this should happen. I mean, have we forgotten what happened to Ryan Steele during Season 2? I never thought he'd be back after he lost his virtual powers, nor survive the self-destruction of the dungeon. Grimlord has been becoming stronger since Minute 1. Also, the last episode, Galileo's New Memory, may have a good ending since Grimlord was stranded in space, but it just wasn't satisfying enough. Also, in some personal way, a certain theme could be played. So, let's get on with it. Episode 94, The Virtual Reality War The story begins as usual with Ryan at the ancient Buddhist temple, summarizing something very serious, and also developing a lesson his dad taught him. His greatest of all was humanity. <clears throat> I don't want to butcher him in any way. My dad has taught me many things while I was growing up. But when I was a simple baby to a mature tween, it was just me and him alone and against the world, as he taught me his greatest virtues and attributes, not just in learning how to bend yourself, but also those lessons about life itself. He has been an inspiration to me, and I was so glad that I finally returned to him safe and sound after ten long years while he was gone. 
I feel I've been becoming more like him every day, and that's all that I wanted to be. But one of his most prestigious lessons that he bestowed upon me, and the only one that summed up everything that I was taught, was humanity. And that was one lesson that I'll never truly forget. In an opaque basement being crowded by various gizmos and gadgets, Dr. Poindexter was marveling over J.B.'s robot, who was just rescued by Caitlin and J.B. from Grimwood's virtual dark fortress. During that time, a program, or rather a calculation of the universe, overrode Oracle's drainage, resulting in overload and rendering the ship unusable and immobile. Upon the ro robot's freedom, the creepy head circuits and computer banks were fried. It was actually destroyed twice. Once prior, when Ryan blasted away his tentacles and small body by his laser pistol, while also impaling his center third eye by his laser saber. As he was being stranded in deep space and cyberspace, Grimlord then vowed revenge for the troopers as his lair and Oraklon were being repaired, but with very little luck. Just then, the tech geek met up with the troopers and Cheetah, and he couldn't be more happier to see them after saving JB's prized possession. Guys, so glad you made it! I can't thank you enough for rescuing Galileo. No problem, Doc. It was easy, actually. JB just sent off an explosion to that scary head Oraklon. What she's trying to say is JB had commanded Galileo to calculate the entire universe, disabling the drainage and destroying Oraklon in the process. So now that Grimlord's in space somewhere, does that mean he's finished for good? Have you finally won the battle? Cheetah made a huge grin, though the trio just looked at each other. Before she was a she made an outburst, Ryan intervened. We're not really so sure about that yet. Galileo's head began twisting. I can help you find the Dark Fortress if you like. Yeah, maybe we can really find him and finish him off this time. I don't know, Cheetah. Grimlord could still be in virtual reality somewhere. <laughs> hey, maybe he, we can plug in Galileo into the virtual world so he can help track him down. Great idea, JB. Do you think he can do it? I know so. I did, prog I did program him to keep our secret safe, just in case anything happens to the lab or any other piece of information Grimlord could find. Let's bring Galileo to the lab. I'm sure he can be very useful in finding the Dark Fortress location. Pause for a moment, thinking that this could be the day when his nemesis would fall and his father would be safe. Hey, Ryan, you okay? Yeah, I just hope we can pull out all the stops and finally finish him off, so that both worlds and my dad would finally be safe. Then let's do it. We'll definitely. Then let's do it. We'll definitely take the fight to him. He shared his friend's determination. Poindexter wished them luck as they marched out of his technologi technology trove. They made it to Professor Hart's lab and for once, without incident, not even an attack made by any of the evil overlords or fighters. Jeb was still lounging on the long platform awaiting a scrumptious meal to be materialized. While JB was hooking Galileo up to his computer, there was a contact coming to the lab itself. I'm picking up a signal from the war stadium. The general is hailing us. He shown him. There was a crimson top hat, a suit with the same color, and yellow reptilian skin with a pair of ears sticking out like a bat. General, what a surprise! It was undoubtedly her favorite Newton League football coach, particularly to her preferred team, the War Slammers. Hey, troopers. I heard you were successful in disabling Grimboard's virtual fortress. But I sincerely doubt the, ba the battle's over. Yeah, we kind of feel the same way. Galileo is being hooked into virtual reality so we can find the location. It's about time we'll finish him off. Yeah, I've also heard about JB's contraption. And as long as Colonel Icebot and General Ivar are around, our nemesis would find a way to make the fortress operational again. Which still brings me to something I've regretted I'm not informing you sooner. What is it, General? I'm sure you guys haven't heard of the Turbo Techies yet, have you? Bill replied they haven't, although Cheetah was the only one that had. 
The Turbo Techies. They're a team of robots. Indeed they are, Cheetah. They reside on this desolate area in space known as Asteroid 66. It has low gravity and it usually orbits around the Void Club. We're on it, General. Look, I got it. Location of Asteroid 66 confirmed. Everyone went over and a large rotating particle of gray space rock was revealed. It's rocky terrain covered in craters. They eventually saw an actual field complete with goalposts and yard lines. They discovered from the robot sensors indicating a large particle of space rock that had a football field. The mutant immediately described it as a desolate location that is home to the elusive team in the entire mutant league, the Techies. They were known as a group of hardwired robots, each one looking to sound and like. They were also led by their coach named Trans Shooter, who also happens to be an active teammate from time to time. They had weak reserves, meaning they couldn't stand direct hits, though their attacks, such as electrocution and rumble fumble, can leave some powerful marks. I apologize for not telling you, troopers, but the Techies is a team we know the least about, and possibly one of the weakest. Hey, better late than never, General. We should check it out. Maybe they can help us find Grimlord. I'll transform and emerge onto the surface. Great idea, Ryan! I I wouldn't be so certain. The General did say the Techies are the least well-known. It may be unwise to let them meet someone who's not a mutant. They may not welcome intruders. That's foreign to them. Ah, yes. The Professor has a point there, as always. We need to make a good impression instead of waging war. They're very territorial on the turf. Besides, we can't bring our hopes up too high as they could be a threat. Tell you what, I'll send my team to the astral field and negotiate with them. My colleagues has met them a few times during the season, mostly in single games. He enlisted the usual to investigate the low-gravity turf. However, they had no ways of reaching it. Instead, JB programmed Galileo and asked it to create a portal in the Indigo Sector, or as the mutants call it, the Void Club, which then led to their destination. Portal successful, leading to Asteroid 66. Okay, the mutants are on their way. Let's hope for the best. They unanimously decided to stick together just in case it, if the techies should strike unawares, although they needed to tread carefully since there was a few pit holes with incredible deaths from many meteors that impacted the field. This also explained why the terrain itself looks so jigged as it appeared to be a shooting gallery's target, as well as having some collapsible areas here and there. Although there wasn't any landmines, the only hazard present was wandering off the asteroid into the intense vacuums of deep space. Unfortunately, they realized they were too late. The astro field was already barren with no members of the techies in sight, not even on the mint, mint green end zones. Caitlin asked her after several moments have passed. The team was keeping an eye on the mutants. Find anything yet? No, not yet. How's it going up there? This place looks deserted, and it's no wonder considering it's said to be constantly hit by space rock. Or maybe it's because they can't stand their smell of burning wires, nor oil after they take a dumb. Bleh. <laughs> Good one, Mo. <laughs> oh, you and your distasteful sense of humor. You need to come up with better jokes this time around. <sniffs> yeah, well, the only light thing we see is that skull go post moving its head around, looking at us. <sighs> this guy's really creeping me out a little. You sure you don't want us to come down? I'm positive, JB. I don't want you guys to waste your time since there's no sign of intelligent life anywhere. There's a the ghost's head fixated on the mutants and shot some red lasers or beams from its eyes. It scrambled in every direction to avoid the lethal rays. They were far from safe as the skull later detached itself and continued its rampage. The guys at the lab were growing wor worried for them, and the pukes accidentally collided with each other, stunning them. We gotta destroy that skull! He was about to take out some long red grenades until Kid stopped him. No! We gotta get out of here! The General warned us they're territorial! It's trying to defend itself from intruders! We have to get going before we've turned to the stakes 
extra crispy. I'm sending the Vortex Command now. As they saw the mutants escape to the Indigo Sector, Ryan th then found his words. Kid! Mutants! Are you alright? Yeah, that was close. But not close enough. We owe you one, JB. We owe you one, JB. It's no wonder the general said they were territorial. Yeah, but this is very unlikely. I've never seen anything like this before. It's mostly just for show. Cheetah was freaked out by that stunt, and she was being comforted by Caitlin and Jeb. Do you think... Maybe... Grimlord. He must have programmed the goalpost to keep some of the mutants at bay. Maybe he has something to do with the techie's disappearance. If that's the case, then it's possible that they are working for him. That put the mutants in a shocked silence. That... that can't be! You mean that the techies have been working for him right under our snotty noses? That does not rock! <laughs> More like heavy metal! The Dark Fortress must still be operating somewhere in space. <sighs> I'll have Galileo track its coordinates, and also the techies as well. Hurry, GB. I don't like the sounds of this. I knew the battle was over, was far from over. The heroes to dismay, there were wires, circus, circuit, Gil 9000, Robotus, Mitram, and Trans Shooter within the center of the stage. Oracon was still gone. There were still two Master, the Vixens, and Despera. Oracon was missing. Head of the Techies was standing in the front, its eyes sneering a shiny cinnabar. So, the mutants and the VR troopers have fallen into my trap and discovered my plans. Indeed, they have, sire. With the Turbo Techies under our control, we shall triumph over our enemies and soon rule all of reality. It turned out that they, they beat the heroes to the punch. And through reprogramming by Icebot, they were subordinate and loyal to him and his warriors. Virtual Dark Fortress wasn't moving before. It was conveniently above that asteroid field. His troops saw the wandering bots, then descended and abducted the techies with little effort. The Dark Lord may not need Oracon after all, since he claimed they're far better with having knowledge of the Mutant League and were more versatile. Without the other mutant army, the troopers will be defenseless and easier to defeat. As usual, they cheered. Back at the lab, the general heeded the heroes because the techies were the least known, and their attacks were lethal to organic mutants. The troopers might not be ready, and Professor Hart added, it'll take the infiltration of Grimlord's spacecraft difficult. JB even tried not to just look for it, but also hacking it in for a weakness or a breakthrough. Those attempts were useless thanks to the techies' protective firewalls. Shida asked how they're going to find and penetrate it. There's on only one way to resolve this issue. The group dreaded this, but they had no choice. We must let the eggheads, Tyler and Professor Hart, do the upgrades. Wait, you really think my dad can do it? I'm positive, Ryan. He does still have the knowledge and resources of advanced virtual technology. It was no surprise since Tyler Steele claimed he was trekking around the world for more highly advanced technology in order to turn the tides of the battle. He did create the troopers, after all, and he gave his son a redesigned virtual suit. That alone raised Ryan's and Cheetah's confidence, although he was held back on the possibility he could get captured again. A few days later... Uh, this is actually taking too long. Alright guys, I'll continue this later. This is just dragging on too long. So, this is the Ekron Writers signing out, and I'll see you guys next time.